okay hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel as as you must be aware i have been creating a, a series of videos um, related to advanced power system and specifically um, the few videos before this one has been related with dynamic modeling concepts in power factory well, today is a very good news. Today we have the the uh, we are continuing with the with the series, and today we have a practical session. Um, well, before we start, um, I believe if you are here is because you are uh, interested on my videos. Uh, please. Um, follow me on, on Twitter and also in LinkedIn and keep aware about the updating of my videos, okay? Um, well, today the class is quite interesting because we have the first example about the excellent simulation language, okay? Um, today today uh, the plan is to introduce the basic concepts related with DSL modeling inside the excellent power factory and um, today the idea is try to create a very simple, extremely simple test system using DSL, okay? Um, the idea is that um, this video and probably the next three or four videos will be related with this example, okay? Uh, I, I will try to take time and explain as much as I can about the process of creating a step-by-step -step, uh, DSL model, okay? Uh, I will create everything from scratch. Um, I received many emails. Thank you very much to everyone sending the beautiful words and 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 saying amazing things. Thank you very much. Um, and many other people they are sending email requesting everything that they can. Um, to be honest, I I try to help as much as I can, but there are some requests that. Wow, um, there are people that they are almost asking for 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 the model of the enterprise or 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 a, a rocket to the moon. Um, um, you must understand that this is something that is extremely complicated. DSL is something that is not simple, and and I cannot jump in into a very complicated model for a double double fed induction machine or a, a full converter rated machine or or a, a multi level HBDC system. There are many people asking for those many uh, so many complex models, but before you go into a very complex model, you must have the basic understanding. Um, and, and for many years, I have been uh, doing consultancy using the Excellent Power Factory and some trainings around the world. And, and one of the things that I ever say is, you must understand how the basic concepts inside Power Factory uh, works before it start to create very complicated things, okay? And, and many people, they try to go and jump directly to create a converter and install uh, the DQ axis control, current controllers, and so on. To be honest, that is not the best way to learn this. I know that people say, okay, but learning DSL take time. Yes, of course. It will take probably years to understand and base uh, and and have a proper a proper um, understanding and a proper use of the DSL. Uh, for that reason, don't rush in. Otherwise, you you, you will you will make a disaster. Okay. Something that I really uh, appreciate over the years teaching DSL around the world is that people uh, they don't understand the blocks the basic blocks that they are inside power factory and because they don't understand what those blocks are doing sometimes they make very bad mistakes um you must remember um uh, here on the re uh, on the left hand side you can see that is the uh, dixilen library the global library inside the database of power factory and here i am highlighting one of the folders inside the dynamic models in in few a uh, few videos ago i spoke about the PSS compatible and the IC and, the, and those and those older folders, but today I will focus in this one, macros. 
they are very important macros that they are inside Power Factory and people, they don't understand how they behave. And a lot of people, they just send me one email, oh, what is doing this block? To be honest, that is not the best way to learn because there are two reasons. Um, the first is you are learning from the knowledge of somebody else. And second, that person can be grown. For that reason, every time that I am teaching those DSL trainings, I say, you must create a test bed for your blocks. I mean, it's very simple to create this block diagram that I am showing over there. What is that? That is a platform that I use for testing blocks. I mean, every time that I am creating a new DSL, I am running something like in the lab. In, when, when you go to the laboratory, you start to make uh, uh, um, exercises and tests about what you are doing. And, and this block diagram that I am showing you is what, what I will be doing in the next few weeks. I, I will create something that I call the uh, testing the standard macros. As you can see, this is a very simple block diagram. There are only two blocks. One block, I call that the control source. I mean, this block will represent what we call in the lab a control source. Over there, you can create a sine wave, a triangular wave, a square wave, any kind of signal that you can use to test your a block. And on the right hand side, you have a, a, a block and this block contain the block that you are trying to test. For instance, I believe you can see here inside the library, global library, dynamic models, there is a folder that is related with filters. And one of the most basic filters is a low pass filter. It's a filter that is designed to allow the, 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 the pass of low frequencies. And above the cutoff frequency, you start to dump or to, um, or, or, or to reduce the amplitude of the signal. To be honest, the low pass filter has many transfer functions. But over here, I am presenting the most basic transfer function that we learn when we are in a control theory classroom. When you are in control theory class, you receive many information, a lot of information related with time domain response. And the first system that came to your mind when you are talking about time domain response is the first order transfer function. If you look over here, k divided by 1 plus st, that is the classical transfer function of a first order system. This system receives first order because the dynamic behavior of this filter is characterized by a first order differential equation. And here we have two parameters. One parameter that, e, that is again k that is related with the amplitude. And the letter T represents the second parameter. In some books, they call that the time constant. And the time constant is related with the cutoff frequency. But the letter T is what some books call the, the time constant or tau, defining how fast is your first order system. OK? Now, what is my plan? My plan is try to reproduce what you have done in control theory. In control theory, there is a very basic test, and that is the step test. What is the step test? Well, you have your transfer function over here. For instance, this first order transfer function that we have here inside the filters library, low pass filter library of Power Factory, and we apply a signal. If you remember any book about control theory, the most basic steps is applying a step, a sudden change in the input. 
and this sudden change in the input excite the time domain response of this first transfer, the first order transfer function over there. You must remember the response. Later I will show you the time domain response, but you must remember because a low pass filter can be a RC circuit. And if you remember, the time constant of that RC system is 1 divided by RC. Okay? Okay, keep in mind the following. I am creating a framework to test any kind of block. My objective right now is creating this framework, but the idea is that later you will be able to test any, any block that you have. And that is extremely important because when you are creating new control models or any kind of dynamic model, you must test the model and be sure that you are doing right, okay? Well, what I will do now is I will start to create my DSL model from scratch, okay? The first step is we need to create a frame. We need to create a frame. What you need to think is the frame is like a white paper, an empty paper, where you are planning to draw your block diagram. You can imagine the frame like this empty paper that later I will include my blocks and I will include the signals. That is the basic understanding, the basic way to understand a frame. A frame is just a graphical object that you can put over there some blocks and the signal flowing between the blocks. Okay? To do that inside Power Factory is extremely simple. If you have a project and this project is active, creating a frame is extremely simple. Version 2020 of Dixil and Power Factory allows you to create graphic objects in a very simple way. For instance, if you press here this symbol over there, the positive symbol, automatically Power Factory will tell you, okay, you would like to create a new graph a new object, a graphic object, but what kind of graphical object are you planning to create? Well, what you need to do is something very simple. First, you need to define that we are creating a block frame diagram, okay? You must be careful that you need to select here and tick here, block frame diagram. And the second important thing that you need to do here is to define the proper name, the proper name of your new frame. In this case, I will call this frame, frame test, because this frame will be, will contain the objects that I will be used inside my DSL model used for testing. For that reason, I will use the name frame test, okay? Again, very simple. We create a new object. We need to be sure that we select a block frame diagram. We need to include the name of that, and then you press execute. You need to press the button that say execute. Remember the following. This window over there is telling me that that is a com new. Com new means that that is a command inside Power Factory creating a new object. The name of this object will be test frame and this will be a frame diagram, okay? When you press execute, Power Factory will create a new graphic object. And you will see inside Power Factory that you will have something like I am presenting in the background over there. There is an empty white paper, and on the top left, you will see over there that they say test frame. That is the name that you use for your frame, okay? If you double-click here the name, 
you will have the opportunity to add more information to your friend. If you double click over here at the name, a window will open and that is the, the, the window that allows to you modify properties of this graphical object, the frame, okay? In this case, I just double click here to show you two important things. The first thing is that you must understand that we are creating a model that is a dynamic simulation language model, a DSL model. And what I will do here is the second line, you can in, in the second line of this diagram, you can include the title or more information relevant about your frame. In this case, I will include a line over there for the title, including some remarks saying that this, this frame contained basically the source and a block that will be tested, okay? That is what I added over there, okay? Then I will press OK, and when I press OK, Power Factory will update here at the window. Power Factory will upgrade and will update the, uh, the title. And now you can see the first part over here, test frame, is the name of this graphical object. And here we have the title or more description about the system, okay? But this is a graphical object, and at the moment is an empty, empty object. What is the next step? Well, the next step is I have here on the right hand the block diagram that I would like to create using DSL. Right now we create a frame, a graphical object. But the next step is to create this block diagram, the desired block diagram inside this frame, okay? For that reason, we need to move to step number two. And then step number two is inside this frame, we can use two different kind of objects, three different kind of objects, summation points, signals and slots. In this case, I will start including slots inside my frame. What is the idea of a slot? A slot is a graphical object where inside that graphical object, I will include or I will put the full description of a dynamic model. I will repeat again. The slot is a place where I can put the full definition of a dynamic model. Well, what I will do now is something extremely simple. You must know that we have here the frame that we already created and what we need to do is go into the drawing tools, okay, to the drawing tools and select this very specific icon over here, okay? A rookie mistake. I receive many email people saying, I try to follow your videos and I am making something wrong. Yes, you are doing something wrong because people confuse this very specific icon when those with this icon over here. Please don't do that. That is extremely, extremely grown. The objects below this line over here, they are just graphic objects for including information. For that reason, if you select these bots over there, what you are doing is just <laughs> drawing a bot. Drawing a bot. And Power Factory is not for drawing. Power Factory is for creating dynamic simulation language models, DSL. For that reason, you need to take is the slope diagram over there, okay? Now I will put here one slot, then one more slot. And now what I have done is including 
a couple slots where I need to put some models definition, okay? At this moment, what you have in Dixil and Power Factory at the moment is the frame and two slots, but this is only graphical representation without real models, okay? Now, what is the third step? The third step is, okay, we have created some slots. We create two slots because the desired model have a source and a block that is under test. But now we need to include over there definitions. We need to define those slots in a proper way. Well, defining slots is extremely simple because what you need to do is double click to the graphical object. When you double click into the graphical object, automatically Power Factory will open a window and it will show you the, the window that has the information about the slot, okay? The first line over here, as you can see over here on my laser pointer, is you need to include over there what we call, what we call the uh, name, okay? In this case, I will call the um, slot located at the left hand, I will call that the source, okay? For that reason, I will use the name over there, slot source. Okay, we have included the name for this slot, but there are more important and relevant information that we need to include, okay? As I say to you before, Dixil and Power Factory use the concept of objects. And if you remember, objects for any, any object-oriented language, objects has some very specific properties. Some of them receive the name methods, but others receive the name class. Here, there is a very specific line that you can define the class name. What does mean that? Well, as I say to you, the slot is a place that you can put inside dynamic models. And those dynamic models can be of very different types. The generic type, the generic class that you can find is the element DSL. The generic name of any dynamic simulation language model is the element DSL. For that reason, I will include over here as class name ELN DSL, okay? What is doing that very specific definition? Well, later when you are um, when you are putting together all the objects of your dynamic models this line over here is defining a filter and as consequence for this very specific slot the slot number 1 that slot will receive only objects with the class name ELNDSL okay and be careful, you need to use capital E and capital D when you are writing E-L-M-D-S-L, okay? Be careful with the name. If you make a typo over there, later you can have a problem. You need to be careful and pay attention to details when you are creating DSL models, okay? Then we have here, we have here, uh, many other classifications. I will not put my ha my hand over there. This is not the moment to discuss about classification. But what I will do is I will define a port where I will receive the output signal. Okay. What I'm trying to say is here at the very end of this window, you are defining the variables. In this case, you have the possibility of defining inputs and outputs. However, if you look over here, my desired block diagram, 
that is just basically a source and any source has just outputs. For that reason, I will include only a signal representing the output at the name that I am using over there is Y4, okay? At this moment, I don't suggest that you change the name. Please try to follow my steps and use the same names, okay? Later, in another example, we will start to open and give you more tips about name selections. But be careful, making mistakes can be very grown inside DSL. You need to be careful and pay attention to details, okay? Well, if you complete all the information here, if you complete all the information, what you need to do is press OK. And when you press OK, you will see that your slot will change in the frame. And right now, you can see that we can, we can see the full name of this block, and that is the slot source. You can see at the second line what is the filter for the class name. In this case, is ELMDSL. And there is a red dot over there, and every single red dot represents an output, an output port from your blocks, okay? Green represent inputs, red represent outputs. This is the output port for this block, okay? And nearby, you can see the name of that output signal, okay? Well, it's time to move for the next slot. Again, what you need to do is very simple, double click. Again, you will see the full description over here, and that is what we need to do. We need to put a name for this slot. In this case, the name that I will use is a slot testing, a slot testing block. Again, I would like to filter the objects that this slot will receive. And in this case, the filter is based on ELMDSL class, okay? Be careful again with the name, be careful about a typo, okay? And in this very specific case, in this very specific case, the block that we are testing what we need to have is only one input. However, for practical reasons, because we will be using blocks coming from the global library, the blocks coming from the global library, they have two ports. One port that is the input signal and one port that is used for the output signal. In order to keep the same structure as the global library, the macros defined over there, I will define one input signal and one output signal for this very specific block. And as you can see over here on the left, left hand side, I am using variable name Y2 for the output signal and I am using Y1 or Yankee 1 for input signal, okay? When you press OK, when you press OK, now you can see that again, the block diagram has changed. Now we have over there the slot with the name testing block, and you can see at the second line, the filter, the class filter for elements DSL, and you will identify very simple the input because you have a green port and you have the signal name over there y1 and on the left hand side on the right hand side you will have another port in this case using red color and that red color identify that that is the output of this block okay by default, Power Factory will draw all the input port in the right-hand side of your blocks, in the left-hand side of your block. 
I will repeat again. By default, Power Factory will use green color for the inputs, and all the inputs will be located at the left hand side of your blocks. And on the right hand side, you will see all the output ports, all the output ports, and they will have red color. Okay? That is the configuration by default for Power Factory. Um, sometimes people ask me, can we change that? Okay, we can change the inputs and outputs, but it's your responsibility keeping the track, okay? If you keep, if you change the orientation of your blocks, you can swap inputs and outputs, okay? But the colors stay the same. Red for outputs, green for inputs, okay? Well, when we finish, when we finish the step number three, when we finish the step number three, this is how the frame will look. At this moment, we have over there two slots with the proper information about the name or title, about the filter used for the class, and also for inputs and output signal, okay? What is the next step? Well, if we are creating this beautiful diagram, as you can see over there, there is an arrow interconnecting the control source and the block under test. For that reason, step number four, step number four must be connecting the signals. Okay? We need to define signals. Signals directions or flow of signals are defined inside the frame. And to do that is extremely simple, okay? Again, I need to make clear the following. When you are creating this, this signal over here, this arrow over there, please don't make the silly mistake. The silly mistake is people go and take one of the arrows below this line. Please don't do that. Remember, again, this, the icons behind, be, below that, that line over here, those are just drawing, okay? You will never connect two slots using one of those arrows below the line. The only, the only arrow that you need to use is this one, and you will recognize because when you stop over the cursor, you will highlight the name signal, and that is what you need to do, okay? Then you select signal, and something that you must understand. Every time that you are installing signals inside the frame, you need to go from red to green. What I'm trying to say is Dixilin is very different to other software. Orientation is very important. We have red color to define outputs and green color for defining inputs. For that reason, every time that you are drawing signals, you need to go from one output to one input, okay? From red to green. Okay you can see that automatically Dixieland Power Factory is giving a name for that signal. And the name that will receive that signal is Y1. I will tell you again, we draw the signal connector between the red and the green dot. And automatically Power Factory will include the name Y1. Okay? Automatically, by default, Power Factory is taking the name, is taking the name of the ending point of the arrow or the point where you are connecting the input of the signal. Okay? Be careful with that. Don't change names, please. Come on. I don't want people making mistakes and then coming back to me with uh, complaints. Um, I want that you keep by now, by now what I need is that you just keep the steps as I am doing. Later I will run more explanation about signals name, priorities and so on. 
this is not the moment of overcomplicating with a rocket science, okay? Well, um, time is up. Uh, it's more than 30 minutes. I promise my students that I will not do videos more than 30 minutes because they are complaining that they go sleepy. And what I will do is I will close the class today with a summary of the different objects that we have created today. Okay? And nothing better than this graph over here to show you what we have done today. Okay? What we have done today is working basically here inside this red box at the right hand side. What we have done is defining a composite frame that we use the name test frame. And inside that frame, we define two slots, one for the control source and one for the uh, block under test, okay? As you must remember from my previous videos, if you pay enough attention, you must remember that I say that those objects are located into the project library. If you are working with your project, for instance, the name is example1dsl, you can go to the local library, to the project library, and there is a folder that receives the name user defined models. By default, Power Factory put all the DSL models that you are creating inside that folder. I will repeat again, all the objects related with DSL that must go inside the library, they will be located inside the user-defined models. And as you can see over here on my laser point, you will find inside that folder a uh, object that received the name test frame. And that was the frame that you create today. Okay? But if you look inside that folder, what you will find is four different objects. Inside the test frame, you will find four different objects. Two slots in green color over here. You can see the first line and the second line. You have two slots. One slot for the source and one slot for the testing block. That is what we define. We define one block for this source and one block here for the block under test. And we have here a arrow that, as I say before, that arrow represents the signal going from the from one slot to the another slot. And this signal received the name Y1, as you must remember. And uh, the fourth object over there is user-defined models, but I will not explain that at this stage. I will wait several other videos uh, before I can explain that, okay? Well, I will conclude my class today. I will class, uh, conclude my class today. You have created just the frame, including two slots and one signal, okay? At the moment, if you want to run initial conditions and run a time domain simulation, this model will do nothing. And this model is doing nothing because we don't have any dynamic equation describing the models that we want to define. And that is the job for my next video. In my next video, I will start to include dynamics, the definition of dynamics of every single component inside the model, okay? Well, this is the end of this part one in this example. I hope you find this useful. I know that you will say, okay, we did this, but I didn't see any result at the moment. I am afraid that creating DSL is a very time consuming. 
Believe or not, a model can take a year or even more. I remember my first model about full great wind turbine and I spent more than eight months just creating the model. For that reason, if you are sending emails to me, please create a wind turbine model online using YouTube. I am afraid that, that we don't have time to do that, okay? Uh, however, if you want to do that, you can use those, you can follow the steps that I have been discussing before, and you can create the model as complex as you want. However, think about that every time that you are creating a complex model, you need to care about every single complex detail. Okay, this is all for today. Thank you very much for watching my video. Thank you very much for all your feedback and your requests. And I will say bye now. Thank you.